What's happening, everybody? It's your man, Dame D, and we're on DC. Man, another Monday, and I'm excited, really. You know, today, today's guest that's going to be joining me on the mic, uh, man, I don't, I don't even know where to begin. Can you say up-and-coming, dynamic actress, filmmaker? I mean, this young woman has really been blazing a trail, um, and oddly enough, you know how someone sometimes just catches your attention. You know, my wife and I, you know, and I think I may have mentioned this, you know, once or twice on the show. We like to watch horror movies. And we just happen to be watching a piece, you know, this film that this young lady was in. And it's just one of those things like, wow, you know, she's really talented. And, you know, you, you go through the process and you reach out and we're blessed to be able to have made that connection and to have her join us here today. Who knew, right? So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to bring to the stage today's guest, actress, filmmaker, the incredible Destiny Brown. Look at that smile, ladies and gentlemen. Destiny, how are you doing today? <laughs> I'm doing great. Thank you so much for that introduction. I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> well, look, so, so so are we. And, you know, like I said, this, we came across you, you know, in the film. We're going to talk about that film. We're going to let people just hang on just a little bit longer. Um, but before we really get into that, you know, I always like to start getting to know about the person because you know we get to see the glitz and the, the glamour of the entertainment industry but who is destiny brown because i think that's really important that we we start there sure um so starting off i was born and raised in baltimore maryland so proud okay. uh hailer from the dmv <laughs> um okay and okay I think, um yeah, and I, I grew up on top of a theater, actually. So I grew up in Mount Vernon, oh, wow. and the Spotlighter Theater was directly um, below the apartment that I grew up in. And so I used to, like, put my ear to the floor and listen to some of the theater performances. Um, and that actually turned up um, being the first place where I had a theater camp that I attended. And it was a Shakespeare theater camp. Um, and I was in elementary school and the camp was for middle school and high school, but um, I was given a scholarship and, a, and an opportunity to still uh, pursue the camp. And I fell in love with the craft. Um, I went to performing middle schools and then performing arts high schools. I went to Baltimore School for the Arts and um, mm -hmm. was able to have the same Shakespeare teacher as Tupac and have all these amazing oh, wow. teachers that um, treated me like a professional when starting like when I was a freshman. Um, and I just like really grew a respect for the craft. Um, mm -hmm. Theater has been a way that I've been able to cope with issues growing up with a single mom and, um, wow theater was kind of that way for me to be emotionally mature and um, learn about my emotions and, and have what I've been through and have my depth be serve a purpose and feel like yeah. I was connecting with these characters and people could watch it and cry or, or smile and, and have a, have a moment that they enjoy. And so wow. um, I feel like that carried over to just my passion uh, for teaching. So I um, I'm a teaching artist as well. Um, I feel oh, like wow. I can't describe who I am without kind of determining that yeah. that's a part of it. Um, and so I um, went to school on a full ride and being able to, okay. you know, coach students with scholarships and coach them on their theater acting auditions and be able to be in a feature film and be able to give them, you know, feedback on how to audition without an agent and, and get, um, feel like I'm just being a part of the, the, the solution when it comes okay. to all the barriers that are put in place for black and brown people to just not be able to get in to the industry and tell their own stories authentically. Wow. I mean, Destiny, that, first of all, I mean, I, I, I feel chills just hearing that because, you know, Thank you. for someone, and again, there's, and I don't want this to sound wrong, but for, for a young woman such as yourself, is you, you're really pretty much on just really beginning your journey, if you will. But to be able to right. take what you've been able to achieve so far 
and pour that back into others. Like, what did, how does that one make you feel? But how does that line up too, though, with your actual career? Because it sounds like you, know, you love acting and performing, but is that more of a fulfillment for you to be able to be able to pour back into others in the way that you are? Definitely. I think um, I didn't know it until, so I've been teaching at a nonprofit for about five years, but this year is when I started really full-time teaching theater in the Bronx. Um, And I originally had like anticipated for my life to be, you know, primarily acting with teaching Mm -hmm. just like on the side here and there. But I think um, being a full-time teacher, I feel like I found my purpose in a way that I feel like just acting alone, I wouldn't have had that fulfillment. So um, I do primarily commercial auditions right now. And um, the summertime, thankfully, is when a lot of things shoot. Um, So, you Mm. know, I'm able to have my summers dedicated towards that. But, um, you know, I think I don't think I could see my career as just being an actress or just being a filmmaker. Mm Um, and being mm-hmm. truly fulfilled. Um, right. But in the future, I want to have my own organization so that the same type of production company experience I got when I was in high school, I can give to other students um, and have them kind of merge in a way that isn't mm-hmm. like perfect right now, but in the future, I hope <laughs> will be. That's awesome. That is so awesome. I mean, I, I really feel that. And, you know, there was something else that you mentioned, you know, really being able to bring about black and brown representation you know, in the industry and how much that means to you. And just curious, you know, we, we've, you know, the media kind of turns it in a way to it, you know, we've heard the Taraji P and the Oprah, you know, back and forth, you know, just curious from you, from someone who's in the industry and really you're looking to make film, like you said, you're really looking to create, you know, how, I don't say how important, but what was that conversation like? Like what, what does it mean to like destiny and her interpretation on how important it is that, you know, our black and brown women really get fair pay, you know, fair recognition for the work that they're doing, you know, in the industry. Yes. I mean, I feel like it's so important because you have to work twice as hard just to try and get yeah. half as amount of pay. <laughs> and yeah. I mean, I think it's, um, it's really sad because I think that there's this like um, kind of pipeline where you, Mm. the only way that you're really able to truly start getting paid is when you start bringing a claim to a movie or something like that. Mm. But it's like, Mm. how do you start out? You know, how do you um, know who to contact if you haven't been given access to the industry? And if you don't have a a father who's in the industry or, you know, friends and things like that, it it really feels like, okay, well, I'm just going to give up. I'm not going to try an audition Mm -hmm. because you get discouraged because you feel like, oh, well, they're talking this language that I have no clue about. And how do I find a way? Um, So that's why I feel like it's so important for there to have for there to be people that look like everyone behind the sc- screen making the decisions because yeah. that then you wouldn't have those issues, you know? And I think mm. that it becomes a question of, are you telling this story because you really care about the communities that these types point. of stories come from? And that, for example, when you're coming in and shooting The Wire in Baltimore, what mm-hmm. is your lens? You know, are you right. highlighting the and trying to uplift the community or are you trying to perpetuate stereotypes that we already know um, and have seen in mainstream media and Mm. that's where I find the most opportunity for change and to knock down things and I think like with Taraji P. Henson speaking out the more that we start listening and actually not just hearing it and just moving on after it's not no longer a headline is when we'll actually start to make change And I think what you just said right there at the end, after the headlines were gone and all the talk has dissipated, what are we actually doing to make that change? And I think that is the, without question, the most important piece. So thank you, you know, for for sharing that that point. Thank you for the Um, question. Oh yeah. I mean, you know, I'm just listening, you know, you're very profound, you know, and some great, (laughs) some great things. And it just makes me think too then. So with that, whole ball of you know movement like you said we moved past it i'm curious to know for you though um what what maybe has been the hardest thing that you've had to adjust to 
you know, getting used to or comfortable with now, you know, as an actor, because, you know, being a filmmaker too, you know, you, you wear like a couple of different hats. So like, what has been the hardest yeah. thing for you to adjust in maybe in both areas? Sure. Um, I would say the hardest thing that you have to just grow accustomed to is that the grind never stops as an actor. I think mm. um, I've been blessed since the movie, um, since Hell House, to um, mm. receive a, a manager who's been able to provide a little bit more guidance. But I feel like um, Hell House was a result of me submitting to 100 auditions on backstage and one of them being something that became life changing. But I think mm -hmm. even after that, it's like, you have to keep going. You have to keep auditioning. Yeah. You have to keep on trying to make those connections. And um, it can be exhausting sometimes, especially mm -hmm. when you have, you hear these discussions about, you know, should actors get paid for auditions or um, especially in New York city and LA, these big hubs, it's a pay to play game where you're, you're paying mm -hmm. to meet with these casting directors and you're paying for the chance uh -huh for them to say that we like you enough that we want to keep you around, but they're not obligated to. So they're taking hundreds wow. of your dollars and wow. you, you know, you have the connection, but it, it gets expensive, you know? Yeah. And then also the, the, you have to kind of weigh the opportunity cost that as an actor, you want to have a flexible job that allows you to leave at the drop of a hat and in audition. Mm. And thankfully I have, um, a full-time job that is very understanding that I'm still in the industry. And so they're a little bit more flexible, but I think so many actors have to work jobs that they're not getting paid um, mm. how much they could be just because they want to find a job that's flexible. Um, and so there's just, right. there's just a lot of the grind that, that goes into being an actor that I think um, it can be really, like you said, like the glitz and glamour can be really fun when you get, that big role and yeah. you're really excited yeah. <laughs> and make it worth it but you have to grind and grind and in between the, um it doesn't stop that's the part we don't see uh you know again yeah. just learn something new they you know you know like you say pay to play who knew right like we as yeah. as fans we don't see what you actually have to put into uh your craft to even have an opportunity to share your craft so i mean that that's huge but there is a flip side too in all that you said because you have been blessed to be, you know, and I want to say congratulations yes. on your award winning, you know, best student film out of out of yes. water. Now I, I have to know one being a student and probably having a full class load on one hand, you know, trying to balance your life and you know, live your best life on the other, but you found time to do this film, you know. What was that process like for you at that time? Sure. So this film, I was actually, um, I received a producer credit for, but I was at primarily an actress. And this was one of the films that I auditioned for um, as a result of wanting to make sure that my last semester at New York University wasn't wasted just focusing mm. on um, classwork. Uh, it, was, it was a crazy experience. I, I just like kind of grew really, um, dedicated to making as many connections as I could with not just the NYU community, but with New York Film Academy and Montclair State University and just other schools that were in um, in my network, but I feel like I hadn't worked with before. And to get that um, in-person experience, I feel like you can only do so much in class until you have to start learning as you do. And so for me, that was student films. And I'm so grateful for that experience because it allowed me to feel um, like I knew what I was doing, even though it was my first feature film, um, I was able to go on to the Hell House set and kind of know how to be professional and how to right. um, make everybody happy. You know, you've got to know your lines. You have to know um, kind of what's going on around you and, and when you have time to prepare and when you don't have time to prepare. Right. Um, so I feel like that's what, what it kind of blossomed out of, but it was amazing. Um, because uh, a friend of mine who I'd worked on a film with before kind of referred me to this audition pool. Um, and mm -hmm. it was a true story based off of a friend of theirs that had committed suicide. And mm -hmm. it was a, a beautifully like abstract film that um, we found out was, I found out was going to Cannes after the fact. And to not only have it go to Cannes, but also receive an award was just insane. And um, it just kind of shows the the crazy nature of the industry. You know, you yep. can just yep. 
you're working on a student film and then you get this amazing credit. Um, so it was truly a special moment and it was a really special project. That's awesome. I, I yeah. love it. I mean, it, it, that, and that's the beauty of, of the things, you know, being able to share and talk about, you know, this is one of the things that we were, I mean, I didn't even know you and I was proud of. I was like, I mean, look at this. I mean, you have this young woman that's, you know, in college that's, that's making things happen, you know, that's really going to be able to impact her career. And, you know, like you said, from that, you know, we've seen you flourish and, you know, we're going to come back, you know, we're going to take a quick pause for the calls. We want to thank our sponsors really quick. But we're going to come back and we're going to talk with Destiny about, you know, her role as Rebecca uh, Vickers in uh, Hell House. And don't go anywhere, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to have some fun as we come back from the short pause. And we'll see you on the other side. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're back fresh out the break. You can see the lovely smile and face of today's guest, actress, <laughs> filmmaker, Destiny Brown. And we've been really having some fun just really getting to know Destiny in the first half. But we're going to go ahead and dive in because, like I said earlier, on, we, we met, my wife and I met her on screen watching her in her film, you know, uh, Hell House LLC Origins, the Carmichael Manners. You know, this story, you know, is a couple of pieces to it, if I remember correctly, but in this portion, you played Re Rebecca Vickers, um, you know, and I'm curious to know for you, from the things that you've done, what was it like for you preparing and actually playing in a kind of horror suspense type role? Yeah, sure. So um, Rebecca Vickers was a very special role because one, it was my first feature film. So that um, came with a whole level of preparation that I had never really experienced before. Um, and I was in my final senior, uh, final semester of my senior year of college at the time. So I was navigating, um, getting all my schoolwork done. There would be times where I would, um, we would have shoots that would start around noon, go until 2 a.m. I would take wow. a nap until about 4 or 5 a.m. And I would do some homework and then take another <laughs> nap and then, you know, get ready for breakfast and then go on set. And that type of grind I feel like was only possible because I was so passionate about the project and um, I feel like it was so special to have um, a film franchise that already had this um, cultish following from the original film yep. and there had already been yep. three films made after that and so um, it just felt really special and I was like I really want to be able to rise to this challenge um, learning um so many lines and being able to um learn all the lines and know and you know shoot a whole 90 page script in like 10 wow. days was insane wow. um and also Stephen um cognetti the the writer and director um loved to have improv in these found footage style because it, it really just adds for like the realism and um when you're shooting so much so quickly you're just um trying to build in these moments of just, you know, character dynamics and relationships. And so we would have those, you know, days as well, where we would just go around and improv and like, how do you keep that creative stamina at the same time when you're, you're not sure what, what improv scenario you're going to be thrown into. Um, but all in all, it was such a great experience to um, really kind of set the scene of just professional and um, kind, like just on set that just made it a fun, fun time. I mean that that's just a real deep dive i mean it just sounds like so you, that shoot you say i mean you were able to it, the shoot was 10 days yeah you know and my goodness like you i don't want to say that you were wrecked but i mean like there's really no in between like you said going back and forth you know class sleep school you know work job i mean is that really what it looks like on, you know, and as you've kind of started growing, growing and going through other, you know, projects, is that typically like the case or like are some maybe more, you know, longer shoots or sets or, you know, is that something that for you does, does that really matter? Like you just 
want to get in there and get that grind going and go ahead and knock it out? Like, <laughs> does that matter? Or, you know, like, what is, what is, you know, destiny yeah. feel about that? Yeah. I mean, I definitely think that narrative film, so a typical film that you see where there's close-ups and wide angles and all those, you know, beautiful shots that we love to see. Um, it definitely takes a lot longer, um, which there's some, you know, beauty to that because I think right. um, you get into the flow of you're going to shoot your wide first. So your mm. first couple takes, you can kind of not phone it in, but you can make mistakes a little bit because mm -hmm. you're only going to mm -hmm. be using that for the shot of the building or whatever. And so then as you get closer, it's like, okay, things are getting more serious. Maybe the emotional moment, you didn't really get fully emotional on the wide, but then the close up, wow. you're like, okay, here's my time with found footage. Yeah. Any shot is up for grabs, you know, and we wow. were filming a lot behind the camera as well. So you also had mm -hmm. that like physical stamina that you had to keep up. Mm -hmm. um, so it was, it was very intense to have like these long days. And in my character, Rebecca is one of the more emotional characters. So she has a lot mm -hmm. of screaming and crying and <laughs> how do you take care of your voice? Because the next day right. you got to pretend like that's not what you were doing <laughs> last night. Um, and so, yeah, it was just a really fun, just challenge all around. And I think it's just really fun with found footage that you can go that quickly because then you can mm -hmm. just, um, accidents can happen and then that can be right. you don't need to try and remake it for another take or for another angle it's right. just boom we got it and we move on and just keep on going wow yeah I, I love it. that's <laughs> a thing to hear you know and, and uh i wonder for you you know because when the, when the strike happened yeah. you were were you just entering into like really getting into into film and thing when, when that strike when the strike started yeah, it was really a scary moment to kind of be right into like going into the professional industry world and like wanting to take it seriously in full time and then um, kind of everything going, going like stopping and pausing. <laughs> um, I will say though, so Hell House was actually a non-union film, you know, and I think that oh. because oh of the strike, yeah, it's, it's a high end on that level but they're very much like oh, indie wow. film non-union and because of that i feel like amc plus and shutter was able to like mm -hmm. promote our film more because nothing else was yeah. really being shot and so there wow. it was this kind of beautiful thing where we were a part of a non-union um production that we could kind wow. of still elevate at this time where, where other people wouldn't be able to speak about their productions. Awesome. We were still yeah. able to post about it. We are still able to kind of highlight it and say, you know, hashtag support indie film because there are still people who are doing, you know, great things. And we had a great experience on set. And so, um, yeah, it was a very interesting time though, I think to, to be an actor in general and just uh, kind of navigate what the industry was going to look like. <laughs> Yeah, and, and and that's so that was the first part, but I, I'm curious to know now that the strike is over then, um, what has it kind of been like for you? Has it you know, with being able to have the indie film and now the strike yeah. being over, has the floodgates, if you will, kind of opened up for you now with new and improved opportunity? Not to say that you know, you want to say no opportunity is not a good opportunity, yeah. but now have right. you been able to see and receive more opportunities and more roles? And are you preparing for anything that maybe you can share that may be coming up in the near future? Sure. So um, I actually, after Hell House, was a part of two stage productions in New York City, which was okay. really an interesting experience to just transition to, um, you know, performing in front of live audiences and, and everything mm -hmm. that, that goes with that. Um, and one, uh, the most recent one was called In Conversation of Love, and I was the lead character. And so oh, wow. learning... A full a full script um, with these monologues, with these you know beautiful moments, and also still teaching and everything. It was crazy, but wow. really grateful for that. Um, I guess the floodgates are definitely like I would say a lot more accessible now. Like I feel like um, I've been able to audition for some really cool projects, and um, I've, I audition a lot more commercially just because I'm more available for commercial auditions that can be shot in a weekend or something like wow. that. Um, but this, um, the same summer that I shot um, Hell House, I shot um, 12 to Midnight, which is a movie that's coming mm -hmm. out soon. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so I'm excited for that. Um, that'll be coming out. I'm in Stephen Cognetti's uh, first narrative film. Um, it's a very small role, but I'm in uh, 825 Forest Road. So that's exciting. Okay. That's right. Um, 
And we'll see what this summer holds. Um, I've been really interested also in like, um, I've been coaching more, which has been really fun. Okay. Okay. Um, and like I said, with the commercial auditions, maybe you'll see me on a McDonald's or some type All of right. commercial soon. All right. Let's see. <laughs> It. I love it. I love it. And I just love, I really got to say, you know, love your energy, um, love your passion. I mean, it really comes through, you know, and really just talks about who the person you are. I mean, it's, it's awesome. It's refreshing to see. Um, and I'm just curious, you know, as we close out, because man, time really flies. Yes. Um, you know, for someone who's, like I said early on, you know, relatively new, but you, you're breaking ground and you're moving forward, you know, if there's one piece of advice that you could share with, you know, an upcoming and aspiring, you know, actor or actress, you know, what would that one piece of advice be? Sure. And thank you for the opportunity to share it. Um, if you have everything that you need right now to get started, um, mm. I have students who have told me that they're interested in, you know, getting started in high school with auditioning. And, you know, sometimes people think, oh, you need a professional headshot and those cost hundreds mm. of dollars. No, nope, wow. you can take a, a nice phone picture. And even if the background isn't perfect, you take it on a, a Canva Pro and put the background edit. <laughs> you can send me your pictures. My email, my website is destinybrown.org. If you need help with any of them, I'm definitely here to help and Photoshop it for free. Yep. <laughs> there's there's so much out there if you just believe in yourself enough to submit yourself because that's scary. Mm. I think submitting yourself to an audition, if you've you know never been told that this is something that you could do before, it's scary because you're like, what am I doing here? You know. But I think yeah. that that imposter syndrome has got to go. Mm. I, I tell myself that, okay. and I I, I try right. to lead with that. That you can submit to backstage, you can submit to Actors Access, all those things with you know a free trial or less than twenty dollars a month and mm. um i've had students who weren't going to submit and then now have gotten modeling gigs and even in dmv area there's local yeah. opportunities if you search them out so um yeah you have everything that you need now to get started and the mm. only thing that'll make you better is practice and time you have to take a chance on yourself first to do that ladies and gentlemen you heard it here I can't say anything more. Destiny put a pin in it. Uh, perfect gem and nugget for any of you out there that are looking or interested uh, in, in becoming, you know, an entertainer, an actor, actress, you know, writer, producer, whatever it is. You know, everything right now is at your fingertips. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. But before we go, Destiny, I do want to allow you, please, to provide your social media. We'll make sure we put that in the notes. We want our audience to go out and follow and support you and, yes. and share your journey as you continue to grow and blossom right before our eyes. Thank you so much. I really, truly have interest. I really enjoyed this conversation. Um, folks can follow me on Instagram at Destiny Leilani, which is L-E-I-L-A-N-I -I Brown. Um, and my website is destinybrown.org to contact me and see any other uh, links that I have. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure you go ahead and you follow and support the amazing Destiny Brown. It's another great episode in the books here, Two Mics Up. Man, you can follow Two Mics Up across all social media, IG, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube at Two Mics Up. Feel free to follow me. I'm your man, Damon Cunningham, a.k.a. Dame D N Y D C, host of Two Mics Up. IG, Facebook, well, Twitter, X, whatever they call it now, at Dame D N Y D. <laughs> Make sure you go ahead and you Check out season six. We rolling along the number one network for positive TV programming, the mogul TV global network. Check us out. Check out my, my network mates, man. We bring in brand new content to you each and every week, every day of the week. So go ahead and give us a shout. You can watch us on your Amazon or Roku TV device or online at www.themoguls.tv. So as we close out, I want to leave you with three things like we do each and every week, ladies and gentlemen. May you stay safe, stay blessed, Mike's out.